uh, Faisal Banamea, Banamea, um, who is a um, senior architect with Elm Company. And Faisal is joining us all, all the way from, uh, from Saudi Arabia. Um, I, um, I'm, I'm a bit in awe, actually, Faisal, because nobody um, I've, I've talked to before has, uh, has been able to share that they, um, that they saw the previous con conference I ran, but also went to API Days Paris uh, last, uh, last year. And uh, obviously very familiar with uh, the API journey. And uh, we're, we're very keen to, to hear uh, the story of how Elm Company has has managed to, to transform. So um, uh, leave it leave it to you. Thanks, thanks, John. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You are welcome to this session. Uh, I'm Faisal, and I'm going to talk, uh, talk about transforming the enterprise with the ABIs. Uh, I want to spend more time talking about myself and my uh, biography. Uh, I just would like to introduce myself as an architect interested in ABIs, uh, cloud, uh, and uh, DevOps initiatives. Currently, I'm technically leading the ABI transformation at my employer, which is an company. Uh, I'm also engaged in rolling out uh, another initiative for uh, containers and cloud native applications by doing application migration. Before we start, let me give you a brief about our company. Uh, it's Elm. It's an IT solution company based on Saudi Arabia. The headquarter is in Riyadh, and we have two main branches in Jeddah and Medina. We have started in 2002, and current number of employees around 2,900. Uh, we have many services that are uh, focusing on different domains like citizen services, community support, identity management, transportation, entrepreneurship. Uh, total number of uh, transactions that annually being conducted by ELM services around 500 million transaction. Uh, we have uh, around 60,000 client with uh, 30, 30 million users belonging to this client and utilizing uh, and getting benefits of our services. Of course, we have also uh, research centers that that are specialized in, in some technology uh, domains. As an agenda, today's session, I'm going to make it as more, more like uh, storytelling about our experience. How did we go through uh, the ABI journey? First, we will, uh, we will go through the challenges in the ABI transformation at enterprise level. After that, we will give a brief about the enterprise organization structure model that we have, which is based on business units. Then we will define the business unit and the attributes of the business unit. Uh, later, we will explore the ABI styles that we, 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 we came up with, which, is, which are uh, business unit centric and enterprise wide. And we will conclude by the model that we followed, which we call do-it-yourself model in order to get the ABI benefits uh, and uh, uh, for, the, for the whole enterprise. And then we will conclude. So as a start, ABI transformation is actually changed. So a, a big change in order to, uh, to go from, uh, for an enterprise, from, from the legacy or traditional way toward an ABI, this requires a change in the business, the way that business is being delivered, the uh, technologies, different uh, set of uh, activities that need to be uh, to be ad uh, adopted and uh, being implemented. Uh, ABI owners should be part of the business, uh, delivering uh, standardized uh, ABIs could be part of the technology. So this change, as any strategic enterprise change, is. It find it, it it find that itself in front of a big challenge, which is the resistance to change. People they used to work with the way that they know how to do it. I, I, at at all levels of the user, whether they are technical, whether they are business. Uh, so the, it's human nature, by the way, to resist to change. 
and how to meet this, such resistance change may, may lead to a failure in any in any transformation of course in our case the ABA transformation so we need to mitigate it how can we mitigate the resistance to change it can be done by proper change management either a mandate from the CEO like what happened in the in Amazon and other enterprises a mandate becoming from the CEO Every business, every unit, business, technical, every guy, every team need to deliver their services to be as ABIs, and this is what have been implemented uh, in uh, in many other enterprises. Other uh, other techniques of change management, like organizational structure, enforcement, getting management commitment, are also techniques that are useful for changing management and to mitigate the the risk that comes from the resistance to change challenge. However, in our enterprise, we, we were thinking a little of less noisy approach without making a bit, uh, a bit disruption on the business. So this is what we are going to present in, uh, and what we are going to, to see in the, in, this, in the coming slides. As a brief, to have a mutual understanding about the organization structure that we have, we have an organization structure consisting of business unit or set of business units. Each business unit actually is a cross-functional team consolidating all, all uh, different type of employees from business, from technology, from different background, but they all have one, one mission. And that mission is to focus on, the, on an IT solution and delivering the product to the, uh, to the end customer. So the main focus for it, for each business unit is to de to get dedicated on the on providing the IT the IT solution and how to go with the uh, all the business uh, uh, growth that that are required for it. As an example, identity management is going to be a, is is a business unit. Transportation is another business unit. So it has one or two product for each business unit to focus on delivering the value to the end user beside these vertical uh, vertical business units or cells we have other horizontal departments or services like the information security it operations enterprise architecture which are engaged and shared across all of these units so again the main purpose of forming for, for forming business units as verticals are to to have the ability for what we call business unit attributes. We have three business unit attributes. The first one is autonomy to keep the business unit full, fully autonomous. They can make their own decision without any handcuffs. There's no dependency on making any decision external from uh, ex by an external party or department. Each business unit has its own uh, ability to make the right decision to fulfill their business need and to go be, uh, extra miles beyond the uh, in innovations. Uh, the, second, the second attribute, which is independencies. Of course, as an enterprise, a lot of units, they have sh shared, shared uh, services or shared uh, missions between each other. And th this might, might make some sort of dependency. But in business units, each business unit is independent of each other. Although that, for example, the transportation and the identity management are two, two separate business units, they might target same audience or, or providing some shared services. But of course, in this case, for the IT solution, the reactive model or asynchronous communication is, is, is applicable here or should be applicable here. So main part or main attribute of business unit to be independent of, of each other. Autonomy and independencies leads to the main target of each business unit, which is the business agility, to focus on the uh, on their business domain, to delivering the business value to the end customer and to the clients through the business agility. All of these three attributes are the main the main points uh, are the main trigger for having the business unit structure, which consists of cross-functional team members focusing on a certain a certain mission in, de in delivering the IT solution. When we're rolling out, 
when, when we rolled out uh, and when we were thinking about ABI transformation and rolling out ABI strategy, of course, these attributes are are the main consideration for us. We don't want we put it into we, actually we put it into we put them all into consideration to make sure that the ABI go across the whole enterprise and at the same time we get all the benefit out of it. So we found ourselves into in front of two styles of the ABI strategy. The first one is to make the ABI strategy consisting of initiatives and each initiative belonging to business unit, which is what we call business unit centric. And the other one is to have enterprise wide ABI strategy and uh, applicable for the whole enterprise. In the next slide, we will explain each one of them and the pros and cons of each one. Well, I will start with the business unit centric. In this case, as, as, as we said, each business unit has its own ABI initiative. They have their own way of building the capability, de defining their business, of course, and uh, the styles of the ABIs that could be uh, used, the tooling that are required to be, uh, to be done, and each business unit is completely uh, independent of each other. There is no dependency between uh, the business unit A and business unit B in terms of the ABIs. Not only that, even if uh, even business, if even they can choose the, whatever deployment model that they want to do, whether they, they want to go with the AWS, public cloud, Azure, uh, or even Google Cloud. Alternatively, they can uh, some maybe some business unit decide to go with on-prem solution or hybrid solution. All of irrespective of, uh, so each business unit is having, has the full uh, decision to make whether to go on cloud or on-prem even in, in, in tooling. This style is 100% uh, complying with the, at the business attributes, which are the three ones, the autonomy, independency, business agility. Yet, when we look at it, when, when we have looked at it from the enterprise level, we found that there are, that there, there are going to be inconsistency. And service, because each business unit are going to focus on delivering their own ABI, no matter about the other business, business unit. So this causes less harmony. And, and the most, and, and one more important here, it's all up with this style, it's all up to the business unit, whether they want, they would like to have customer engagement or developer, uh, developer portal completely separate than others, or some business unit, they say that, okay, we don't want a developer portal. And this will show, of course, sort of inconsistency for the customer engagement, especially for the clients who are, uh, who, who, who are consuming APIs or services from different business units. Of course, beside these two risks or cons, let's say, uh, cost, uh, this, this style is cost inefficient because a lot of funding in terms of building capability, in terms of the rolling out uh, strategy, as well as the tooling is going to be allocated for each business unit and this, uh, there could be a cost that can be saved. This lead us to the second style, which why don't we, we go with the ABI horizontally, similar like the information security, IT operation and enterprise architecture that we have, serving all the business unit by its own. However, this raises a question. Now we have an API strategy across the enterprise, but this might, might lead to dependency between business, business, each business unit and the API, uh, API strategy. How can we mitigate this uh, uh, how can we make adaptation on this style by making uh, by making consideration, of course, of the three attributes? This leads us to the what we call do-it-yourself model. And do-it-yourself model is actually a model that that has been assigned to each business unit, uh, assign, uh, that has been created at the enterprise level as part of the ABI strategy and it's going to be the the way interfacing between the business unit and the ABI strategy 
plus it's 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 the efficient way to collaborate to do the collaboration between the business unit and the horizontal initiative in the next slide we are going to talk about the six pillars of do-it-yourself models again do-it-yourself model is actually the adaptation that we have implemented in order to make sure that the enterprise-wide in initiative fulfill the needs of the business unit and respect the, the the attributes of the business unit the first one the first pillar of do-it-yourself is having an abi board of course abi board consisting of uh, architects uh, solution infrastructure uh, of course business on uh, business architect and business owner has to be engaged uh, or has to be part of the abi board and allocated as part of, uh, of the abi board developer advocate and this role could be rotated to make sure that this knowledge is even uh, uh, being spread, uh, separated or uh, shared with all business units uh, it a representative from it operation and information security to assure about the the way to manage and the way to uh, make the abi secure should be part of the abi board it's it's it might not be easy to start an abi board with all of these team members so it's okay to start with one or two architects along with the business owner as much uh, as soon as possible and as the time goes we can the abi board can be uh, can grow the team members can can grow till it reach to, co to cover all of these roles and the main responsibility for the abi goal uh, for the abi board to 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 make sure that the about the rollout plan of the abi strategy as well as supporting the other pillars the second one is the emerging the second pillar is the emerging which mainly sharing the abi culture across the enterprise conducting dojos and coaching uh, uh, sessions either uh, across the enterprise the enterprise or specifically for each business unit uh, another another way of emerging is the gamification and hackathon and we have practiced this and we found that the ABI journey before the hackathon and after the hackathon uh, is th there's a dramatic change on it. It's, it, it, it. it was like a boost for the ABI uh, transformation of our own. ABI days conference series is a, a good uh, opportunity for each enterprise to get engaged and for each even business unit or each uh, uh, ABI uh, 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 guys to get engaged with the professionals across the world they can come up with the latest challenges that exist uh, from in, in, in different domains and also the new technology and new trends that that exist in order to solve some of the issues tooling when we when we talk about uh, tooling always come to the cloud computing and the feature of self-service and auto provision is uh, existing uh, to assure that to enable each business unit to do the ABI starting from ideation uh, till the being into production, covering, of course, ABI design, ABI mocking, management, and monitoring, all of these, having them as horizontal tool with the self-service will make sure about the autonomy and independency uh, attributes to be fulfilled of the, fulfilled of the business units. Uh, the fourth pillar, which is the most important pillar from my point of view, which is the developer portal, having a unified developer portal, which will assure that we have consistent developer engagement and developer ex uh, experience. Although it might belong to different uh, business units, different domains, but after all, uh, as a front end, as a, as a, sorry, as a front for, uh, for of the enterprise, for the, uh, for the, toward the external world, the developer, unified developer portal is very good. Taxonomy or classification model can be applied there, either based on business domain or based on the client, uh, on the client uh, classification. Governance, whenever, uh, for any ABI, for any ABI transformation, there must be a governance. This governance consists of set of guidelines and uh, standards uh, to, uh, to, make, to assure security standards, management standards, Development, even ABI development and release uh, standards, industry uh, standards are always recommended to, to be used. For example, the modern ABI to, to go with the open ABI, 
uh, if you have legacy client that require, then you can go with the other, uh, another industry stand like WS Star or so. In addition to that, in future, when, when there is some streaming APIs or data, data streaming, then we, you can go also with a sync API. Finally, which is again, this is an important pillar is to have uh, all of this journey being documented in a wiki, mentioning all the, the governments that require, the, how, uh, how to get started for each business unit. Of course, it should be uh, easy to, uh, to access. Uh, has uh, has a, a set of use cases either globally or locally within the enterprise, showing some successful story that will encourage other business units to to follow. Uh, also, a result of gamification can be posted as part of the wiki pages and as part of this pillar to make sure that they, it acts as a motivation for for others. By, inter by applying enterprise-wide uh, strategy along with the do-it-yourself model, we assure that the three attributes of business unit are getting uh, satisfied or uh, uh, complied with uh, the autonomy, independency, and business agility. And of course, this, the, uh, 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 the application of, the, of this strategy style and the do-it-yourself model assure that for the enterprise to gain all the ABI benefits that are required to do, what I usually call uh, call it the honeycomb of ABI economy, in, in terms of business agility, in terms of uh, uh, the ecosystem partnerships, internal and external innovation, unifying the channel by uh, across uh, through the ABI or what we call omni stand omni channel, all of these are the benefit that our enterprise gain. Uh, gained because of doing the of rolling out the ABI strategy with the, with this with this way here we come to the conclusion we started by defining the or identifying the challenging the in ABI transformation which is resistance to change and we explain our way to mitigate this by making it less noisy we uh, we went through uh, the ident uh, definition of our organization structure model and the business attributes of uh, of each business unit which mainly focusing on business agility autonomy and independency then we we have explored the two abi styles and the pros and cons of each one the business unit centric and the enterprise wide and we concluded by adopting uh, by adopting the do it yourself model along with the enterprise wide in order to get the abi benefits for across the enterprise thanks a lot for being with us today feel free if you have questions and you can thank also you. thank you very much Faisal. um there are a number of things that a uh, number of elements there that uh, that i picked up on so firstly uh, sort of the challenge between how where, how you have your api capability whether to have it horizontally or vertically within um, within your business units and the challenges that each choice uh, brings brings with it. Uh, if you have it horizontally, then there's a risk of your uh, API team losing touch with the individual businesses. But if you have it vertically, then you still have to manage the the, uh, the technical and, and career um, progression of the API uh, developers uh, with, uh, across those. Uh, other things that I, I was impressed with was the the developer advocacy and um, the results you gained uh, from from hackathons, and I'm curious: is before as well as after the hackathon? Is this because people had to start thinking about APIs before they arrived at the at the um, at the hackathon, and so they, uh, regardless of what results they they actually achieved during the hackathon, they they, they changed their thinking. What what was the what was the big change there? The, the big change actually in the hackathon we have we have identified a set of challenges that are based on the abis so the developers uh -huh. work and, and all the contributors in the hackathon they felt both roles as an api provider and as an api uh, consumer or the developer oh, so okay. they they actually practice the actual uh, and they say the tangible value of of the abis and how can they reflect this 
in, uh, when they get back to the their own uh, business uh, business domain. Mm, I'm impressive. Thanks very much, uh, Faisal, for sharing that, that journey with us. I, I think we all, all learned something.